when I came to the Damien Center, I didn't realize how big the organization was and the impact it truly had in people's lives. We are a one-stop shop. We offer as many services under one roof as possible. So someone can come in and get medication, they can get food, they can get housing assistance, they can sign up for insurance. I think having it all in one spot really eliminates, one, the stigma of going from place to place to place asking for help, and two, just doesn't give people appointment fatigue. With being a one-stop shop, we can offer all of those services at one appointment. The Damien Center stands as one home for HIV wellness. When people visit the center, they come to be treated with love and respect in a one-stop shop for HIV care. COVID-19 brought new challenges to this community, but we are no strangers to facing adversity. COVID-19 posed unique challenges for everyone, but I think especially for the clients that we see at the Damien Center. People suddenly had a lot of resources taken away from them. My older clients were feeling even more isolated than maybe they had been. We had a really large increase in access for rental assistance, for utility assistance, additional food vouchers. There were a lot, of, a lot of areas that really hit hard for a lot of our clients. With so many unknowns initially, our first pillar of response was to ensure that critical medical services continued to keep our community safe and our clients healthy. The first thing we did is look at what services were critical. How can we make sure that those services are maintained throughout? And some of those had to be done in person. Certain medical appointments, getting your food from the food pantry, some other services were just so critical, but we had to do them in person. So we continued to sort of buckle down and make sure we were providing those at the highest level throughout the epidemic. Hi, Jeff, it's good to see you. The Damien Center's second pillar of response was to explore the new world of telehealth and find innovative ways of remotely taking care of our clients. So we looked at like mental health, case management, other kinds of services that could naturally transition. We had to learn how to get the right tools, how to make sure people could work from home, how to make sure clients could access people from their homes even. So it sounds like you're feeling really isolated. It provided an option for the clients that didn't feel comfortable leaving home, but it also, I think, brought in new clients because I have now some clients that live outside of Indianapolis, you know, as far as Terre Haute or Southern Indiana, and it removed that barrier of transportation, which is huge for a lot of clients. And for our third pillar of response, we mobilized to get essential services such as food and housing to the people who were most in need. Clients of the Damien Center were able to be housed in short-term emergency shelter and hotels, and we successfully housed 37 people who were unhoused at the beginning of the pandemic and successfully housed without contracting COVID-19 through the three months that they were in hotel stays. We created initiatives within the food pantry to make sure that people could access Kroger cards and make sure that it was easier for them to gain their basic human needs while being either quarantined or having lower access to transportation. And it wasn't a matter, I think, for us that we, um, that we were trying to figure out, you know, can we do this, can we do that? Um, it was, we have to do that. I think the Damien Center's mission is just as relevant today as it was 30 years ago, and it will be just as relevant in the next 10 years. Without the Damien Center, this community would not look the same at all. Without the Damien Center, I think that we would be missing out on a lot of key populations that need, that need help. There are some people that wouldn't eat if we weren't there. There are some people that I would worry wouldn't get medical care if they weren't there. And not just need, not just need help, but need 
people who actually do care about them, care about their identities, respect their identities. It's so important, if we want to see an end to this epidemic, you have to do it with people who actually do care. The supporters allow us, to, when they come together, to generate enough income to provide services, critical services, sometimes services that we wouldn't be able to provide at all without their support. And it's so important for the health of our community. We aren't just helping our clients, we're helping the whole community be healthier.